Unless you live in a tropical climate that stays warm enough year-round to grow vegetables, you will need to get creative to keep your garden going through the winter months. This year, I decided to try my hand at indoor gardening. Instead of spending hundreds or thousands of dollars on purpose-built grow lights and computer controllers, I decided to take my usual approach and make my own. I purchased some LED shop lights that had similar color temperature and intensity to entry-level grow lights. These cost about $30 each instead of $300 and will probably work just fine. They lack a lot of the fancy features of the purpose-built equipment, but I don't really care as long as they can grow some peppers. I did have to purchase a bubbler though to aerate the water in the hydroponic buckets. This was pretty inexpensive at about $20, but you could pay more depending on the size of your garden. The other big ticket items I'll need are the Raspberry Pi computer to control everything, a relay board to switch on and off my 120 volt outlets, and a box to house the electronic guts of the controller that I'll be building. These additional electronic components add up to about $75, with the most expensive items being the Raspberry Pi computer and the conduit box. If you already have a box you can use or don't care if you even have one at all, you could save about $25 there. Since the lights in the bubbler setup are pretty intuitive, I'm going to spend most of the time explaining how I built the controller itself. Let's take a look at the hardware inside the box. Alright, so what's inside the box? The Garden Controller 3000 has three basic elements inside. The Raspberry Pi, which serves as the brain for the whole project. Its GPIO, or General Purpose Input-Output Pins, are connected to the rest of the project through a 40-conductor ribbon cable. The Raspberry Pi is connected to the world through the Ethernet cable, and it's powered up with a USB power cable. The outlets are switched on and off through this SaneSmart relay board, which I purchased for 10 doll hairs. Between the Raspberry Pi and the SaneSmart relay board, is a homemade interface board to convert the 3.3 volt Raspberry Pi outputs to grounding outputs for the relay board. More on that later. The white wires are commons and grounds that are all just tied together. The black wires are hots that are routed through the relay board into each receptacle. I decided to cut the jumper on the hot side of each receptacle gang so I have more options for individual control without adding additional gangs which I don't have space for. This way, I can switch on the top of receptacle while the bottom remains off. That gives me eight individually controlled 120 volt circuits for maximum flexibility. My Raspberry Pi does not have Wi-Fi on board, so I'm using an old Verizon router in bridge mode to connect the Pi to my home Wi-Fi network. Newer models of the Raspberry Pi come with Wi-Fi, so hopefully you don't have to employ this hack. Controlling the relay board with the Raspberry Pi isn't as simple as plug and play. Because our relay board operates on 5 volts, I thought it would be best to build an interface board to isolate the Pi from the relay board. The Raspberry Pi outputs are 3.3 volts when they are logically high and 0 volts when they are logically low. The relay board needs a current sync or grounding input to activate each relay. That means we can't use our 3.3 volt logic high to switch on our relays. The interface board will need to accept a 3.3 volt input from the Raspberry Pi and convert it into a ground for our relay board. The simplest way to accomplish this is with an NPN transistor. For the NPN transistor to work properly, we'll need to ground the emitter through a relatively high resistance. About 10 kilo ohms will do. The base will be connected to our positive source from the Raspberry Pi through a relatively low resistance. About 2 kilo ohms will do here. The purpose of the resistors is to bias the transistor and control the flow of current through the Pi's GPIO and the transistor. When the Raspberry Pi output switches on, the 3.3 volt positive voltage will flow through the base resistor to the base of the transistor, which in turn will allow a ground seeking current to flow from the collector to the emitter. This will provide a ground for our relay coil to switch the relay and turn on our 120 volt output. Since our relay board has 8 relays, we'll need to reproduce this circuit 8 times on our interface board. I found an old piece of proto board and started arranging the connectors, transistors, and resistors to make 8 NPN transistor switching circuits. Now let's take a look at the software required to switch our relays on and off based on a schedule. 
If you're not familiar with the Raspberry Pi or Linux, there are hundreds of great resources available to help you learn. I'll link a few of these in the description to get you started. I'm going to use a remote desktop app to log into the Raspberry Pi. This way I don't need to have a monitor, mouse, and keyboard connected to the Pi. The GPIO pins can be switched on and off using commands directly from a Python script. So I wrote a short script to control the outputs based on a schedule. I'll go ahead and open my script and start it. Once the script is running, it should remain running indefinitely unless there's an error or a power failure. I'll address the power failure situation later. I'm not going to go into too much detail about my script specifically because the coding is probably the most fun and creative part of this project. I suggest you check out the links in the description and attempt to write your own script. You'll learn so much more that way and besides, my programming skills are barely adequate at best. I'd rather you learn from somebody who really knows what they're doing. If you're new to coding in Python, you can code the on and off times directly into your Python script, but then you'll need to stop the script and modify the code to make changes or additions to your schedule. I decided to keep the schedule in a separate .csv file and read the values housed within the CSV file into the script on a regular interval. That way I can easily see the schedule in a table format without reading through lines of code. It is also easier to make changes this way, and I don't have to worry about messing up my code and crashing the script. Once you are satisfied with your code and have a robust, crash-free program, it's time to schedule your script to run on startup. This is not necessary, but in the event of a power failure, your script will have to be manually restarted. Start by opening a terminal window and typing crontab-e. If you are prompted to select an editor, select Nano unless you have another preference. Scroll all the way to the bottom of the crontab page and type at reboot cd home pi desktop semicolon pseudo python and then the name of your script dot py. The first command will change the working directory to the desktop. This is necessary because my Python script and my .csv files are both in the desktop directory. If I don't tell the code to look here, it won't be able to run the program or find the .csv file. The second command is to actually run the script with super user permissions. If your file name contains a space like mine does, you'll need to use the quotation marks around the file name. Now we'll need to reboot to make sure our script is running when the Pi restarts. After the OS is completely loaded, open a terminal window and type the command pgrep-af python and press enter. If your script launched successfully on reboot, you'll see your script name listed here. Now that our Raspberry Pi script is controlling our lights, fan, and bubbler, it's time to sit back and let things grow. I hope you enjoyed this video and it inspired you to create something of your own. At the very least, it should make you curious about what you can do with these inexpensive, versatile computers. Maybe you're intimidated by learning the Linux OS, but I assure you that although it's every bit as nerdy as it seems, it's not really all that difficult. If I can do it, you can do it.